Hey, uh, so a lot of people who watch this channel will know that I have a passion for music. Well, obviously, I mean, it's pretty much everything I post. But throughout my life, I've also had an interest in art. I am by no means the best artist, but I've always liked combining different interests of mine. Well, a while ago, I stumbled across this old Squire acoustic guitar at a thrift shop priced for quite a deal at only $40. With its low price, I figured I wouldn't be risking too much to give a go at trying to paint the guitar as a unique combination project of both my art and musical interests. First of all, I started with sketching a design of the guitar and figuring out what I wanted. I took inspiration from all these crazy, vibrant, different little uh, guitar designs that I'd seen online that incorporate musical elements and just have a bunch of different colors on the guitar. As you can see, I took some inspiration with the snake-like piano board. A lot of my design was based on interactive elements with the guitar. So like the horn interacting with the guitar's edge and the piano rolling around the sound hole. I divided up the body into different wavy little sections which each had their own different color and crammed these sections with all these different musical features that had been altered in a slight but interesting and unique way. For instance, I drew a really exaggeratingly long saxophone running down the center. I made these violin birds with wings. I also had some clarinet flowers flourishing down in the bottom left. Next, I did a second sketch of the guitar, this time coloring it all in. As you can see, the end result was pretty messy, so I redid it digitally and just played around with the colors to get the exact shades that worked well together. Finally, it was time to remove the old strings get a quick chance to clean up the fretboard and just sand off the guitar body's finish. Of course, this didn't feel quite right, but sanding off the layer of finish on the guitar body will allow the paint to actually stick to the guitar. When I sanded off the finish, I also masked up the guitar bridge, the pick guard, the neck, and all that other stuff that I didn't want painted, and started to put on a few coats of primer. Since I decided to use acrylic paint for this guitar, I actually decided to get some gesso primer acrylic paint. I actually recorded footage of me doing this, except it didn't quite record well for some reason. But the basic process I kind of followed was even strokes of primer across the body, and then once I let it dry, I sanded it down sort of smooth, then redid the coat until I had a fairly smooth kind of coat of primer all along the body. I ended up repeating the process about four times to get a pretty smooth base. If you want to try this yourself, that number actually might vary for you depending on a bunch of different things, so don't worry if you end up using more or less coats of primer. It doesn't have to be like marble smooth. All right, so what I've been doing right now is I've been copying the details, like the drawings from this sketch. I've been copying it now onto the body of the guitar, um, just with a lead pencil going on everything. Um, I've never done this before, but it seems to be working well. Um, when I use the eraser, it doesn't erase all of the lines. Definitely not great at sketching, <laughs> so um, you can see how many lines there have been, but just to get the basic overview of where everything's going to be before I actually start painting. I painted in the main background colors of the, these wavy little sections. While I waited for a new wavy section to dry, I went back to the previous already dried sections and started to paint the foreground elements. All right, so I noticed that this area was a little bit empty. Obviously, you're gonna get half the flowers here, um, but there are a lot of instruments here and I just felt kind of awkward to have this empty space of nothing there. So what I've done is I've just created a microphone. It's leading all the way into the bridge of the guitar. I kind of like the idea of the art is actually interacting with the guitar in a way. After finishing the job, it was time to seal it with clear coat. I decided to go with a gloss spray clear coat as I thought a gloss finish would make the colors pop and make it a lot more professional than say if I used a satin finish. There's my guitar. I've just done a light coating. So I'm following an art tutorial on how to do this. Um, and they said to do very light coat of gloss clear first just to make sure there aren't any paint reactions and make sure it adheres this is where things get tricky because i've not tested the clear coat with the paint and that might not lead to good results so i haven't even tested if this works so if it doesn't work it might screw up my artwork 
which will set me back a lot. Then this is where a minor problem came up. So I've just sprayed like probably the fourth or fifth coat of clear coat and it looks pretty good. I had a problem with it being really uneven and to be honest, it's not the very best. Maybe with some buffing out, someone can make it look much better. I was kind of worried about this. There was a chemical reaction with the white where I'd accidentally painted. I thought the white would cover it. Like I'd painted on top of that before, but what it's done is probably like kind of merge the layers a bit. So really it's not that noticeable from afar and I don't think it matters that much. It's not the best, it's not the most professional, but I think I'm pretty satisfied with it. I've just been waiting to get the strings on this thing and start playing, so yeah. So while that may be a deal breaker for some, it wasn't that big of a problem for me. So all it was left to do was take off the mask. Into it. And as you can see, another mistake came up from probably not removing the masking tape before spraying clear coat on. I assume spraying the clear coat on with the masking tape kind of meshed the masking tape and the paint together. So when I tried to pull the masking tape off, some of the paint actually lifted with it. But it's a learning experience, I guess. Now that's all that's left to do is to put some strings on this. I also made sure to set up the guitar properly, tightening the truss rod and adjusting the action, making it a bit lower by sanding that bridge part thing down. And here's the final product. I think I'm actually very proud of it. I like how it went. Of course, there's debate of if you paint with acrylic paint, will it affect the tone? So we're gonna give it a little sound test. In conclusion, I'm pretty happy with this build. This isn't something that I usually do often. I'm glad that I had a bit of proper knowledge with the kind of process of it. So it had a streamed line kind of method. I think there were definitely a few things that um, went wrong that I can learn from next time, just in case I wanted to do this process again for another guitar build. With the sound test, I couldn't hear much difference in the tone. So obviously if you're working with much more expensive acoustic guitar, you might want to avoid that, but really just for like a more cheaper guitar, like this second hand guitar, it doesn't really matter that much. I didn't notice much of a difference. It still plays really well. Anyway, that's all for me today. Thank you for joining me on this little different kind of video. And yeah, make sure to subscribe, like the video, whatever you want to do. See ya.